your excellencies, heads of electro observer missions, your excellencies, head and representatives of diplomatic corps accredited to the Republic of Mauritius and the UN resident coordinator. I think in the interest of time, I will just say and ride on the, uh, the, the order uh, presented by Master of Ceremonies and say all protocols observed and good morning, uh, bonjour. I think on behalf of the uh, Southern Africa Development Community and as mandated by Her Excellency, Dr. Samia Sulu Hassan, the President of the United Republic of Tanzania and Chairperson of the SADC Organ on Politics, Defense and Security Cooperation. It is my distinguished honor to welcome you all to this important event where I will be presenting the preliminary statement of the SADC Electoral Observation Mission on the 2024 National Assembly elections held on 10th of November 2024 in the Republic of Mauritius. As head of the CIOM, I'm well supported by a representative from Tanzania, the United Republic, the Republics of Malawi and Zambia as members of the Sagdak Organ Tro uh, Troika. Our mission was also advised by two members uh, from the Sadak Electoral Advisory Council. CIOM comprised 35 observers from nine SADC member states, namely the Kingdom of Eswatini, the Republics of Botswana, Namibia, Malawi, Mozambique, South Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and the United Republic of Tanzania. These observers were deployed in all 10 administrative districts of Mauritius, namely Black River, Black, Grand Port, Moka, Pamplemous, Plan Willem, Port Louis, Riviere de Rampa, Savan, and Rodrigues. At the invitation of the government of the Republic of Mauritius, the mission observed the National Assembly elections in accordance with revised SADC principles and guidelines governing democratic elections 2021 and the relevant laws of Mauritius. As part of its mandate, the mission engaged key stakeholders in the Republic of Mauritius, including electoral management bodies, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Regional Integration and International Trade, the Attorney General, political parties, civil society organizations, academia, SADC ambassadors and high commissioners, and other members of diplomatic corps accredited to Mauritius, the Mauritian Police Force, and the Council, Council of Religious Leaders, and last but not least, the media. This preliminary report covers the mission's observations of the pre-election process, election day, and counting. The final report will cover our observations of the post-election process, including the results management and announcement. This is the summary of our findings on the political and security environment. The mission observed that the country was calm and peaceful during the pre-election, election day, and the counting, which attests to the peaceful nature of Mauritians. The mission further observed no major incidents or threat of violence during this election circle. I therefore wish to use this opportunity to commend the people of Mauritius for their peaceful conduct, which contributed to the conducive electoral environment. The mission noted the stakeholders' satisfaction with the police presence across the constituencies, increased security detail in the form of patrols following nomination day, and the advanced training and planning for deploying officers to various polling stations. In pursuit of maintaining law and order during the election, the mission noted that a police communique was issued prohibiting the sale 
of alcohol on the day preceding the elections, on polling day, and the day after the election. The Mauritius police force maintained vigilance and preserved the peace by providing the necessary security to all stakeholders during the pre-election, election day, and counting day, ensuring, once again, a conducive electoral environment. On the management of the electoral process. The mission, the elections were overseen by the electoral management bodies established under Chapter 5 of the Constitution of the Republic of Mauritius. In this regard, the mission observed the following. General confidence and trust among stakeholders in the Electoral Commission's office. Two, voter registration was generally well conducted in the two rounds of voter registration exercised by the Office of the Electoral Commissioner. The first round was conducted between January and February 2024 and involved house to house inquiries to verify the presence or existence of each voter for purposes of voter registration. Around 2,649 personnel were engaged to embark on this exercise. The second round was conducted at regional centers between 16th and 30th of May, 2024. Thirdly, the mission noted concerns over alleged discrepancies in the voter register. Some stakeholders alleged that the register of electors still contained names not in the country of persons not in the country and those who were known to be deceased. They feared that such, an, such, that such names would create an atmosphere for rigging election. Again, this background, the Office of the Electoral Commissioner assured the mission that the electors register was updated through door-to-door -door inquiries to confirm the physical presence of electors eligible for registration. And in addition, the discrepancies might arise as a result of electors leaving the country after registering. Fourthly, out of a total population of 1,261,196,000 people of 2022 census, the mission observed that the Office of Electoral Commissioner registered 1,002,857 voters, which is 79.5% of the population, of which 51% of those of these represent women voters, while well, well, for male voters, the percentage was 48.7. Briefly, the, the mission noted concerns from a few, few stakeholders on proxy voting, noting that this could be perceived as creating an opportunity for electoral mispractices. Sixthly, the mission noted concerns from stakeholders that the counting of votes was still conducted on polling day at polling stations. While some stakeholders claimed that this presented an opportunity for election rigging, others supported counting votes on a day when electoral officers are not exhausted. Some stakeholders recommended that this could be avoided if information, communication, and technology could be adopted. They further argued that the counting of votes on the same day as voting presents practical and financial challenges and this would require more human resources. Some stakeholders informed the mission that this issue had been the subject of protected debate, but there had, been, there had not been any consensus in this respect. Seven, the mission was informed that there had not been any electoral law reforms since the last election in 2019. In the same vein, there were no pending electoral petitions and litigation before courts relating to this election. Some stakeholders acknowledged that the Office of the Electoral Commissioner had done its part in submitting its recommendation of electoral reforms to the government, which in turn submitted it to Parliament, but they were never approved. Some stakeholders attributed the delay in the approval of electoral reforms to a lack of voter education, weak and or limited participation of civil society organizations and the lack of political will. 
while noting that the existence of a clear mechanism for lodging electoral complaints and appeal some stakeholders raised concern about the long turnaround time and the need to establish electoral courts that will focus only on electoral issues. And finally, the mission noted concerns from stakeholders of insufficient civic and voter education by the electoral management bodies. It was observed that there was inadequate election promotional material posted by the Electoral Commission of Mauritius encouraging people to vote, educating them on the voting process. On gender and youth representation, the, meeting, the mission noted that while women accounted for 51.3% of registered voters, only 18%, that is 165, 165 of 891, 891 nominated candidates that contested, that contested for National Assembly positions are women. In this regard, there appears to have been insufficient efforts at national level and by political parties during this election to address this imbalance. According to the electoral commissioner, there were 73 political parties registered at, at the time of this election and that only 29 of these fielded candidates. Out of 891 nominated candidates, 273 nominated candidates were under 40 years of age, while the rest were over 40 years. There appears to have been insufficient efforts by political parties during these elections to motivate women and youth participation in politics. Some stakeholders attributed this low participation of youth to their interests being more issue-based than party affiliation on the role of the state-owned media and media in general. The mission noted that some stakeholders believed that state-owned media is relatively independent and provides coverage to all political parties. In contrast, others expressed concern over the limited coverage provided to what is perceived as smaller political parties and how decision-making in the private place, uh, press influenced their media coverage based on their party affiliation with very little objectivity. Some stakeholders informed the mission about a formula used to apportion airtime, which is only afforded to those who have fielded a minimum of eight candidates. The formula is said to have been determined by the, an independent actuary expert who has considered the number of candidates fielded and the number of returned candidates of a particular party. Some stakeholders believed that political parties and candidates were aware of this formula and that the independent expert had conducted enough sensitization. To this end, no complaints have been received. Most stakeholders were concerned about the level of access to social media for 24 hours during the electoral, electoral period, which was temporarily shut down. The mission noted the clarification by the government of Mauritius that the temporary shutdown of social media was due to national security. While some stakeholders understood that restraining access to social media may be perceived at times as a necessary measure to stop disinformation, others believe that candidates and political parties need social media to organize, assemble, and communicate their electoral programs. It was their view that it is therefore imperative for voters to have access to information to enable them to make informed decisions. I now turn to observation on the election day. On polling day, Siom observed the voting processes and the performance of the Office of the Electoral Commissioner in 180 polling stations in all 21 constituencies of the Republic of Mauritius. The Siam observed the following in all the polling stations visited. The environment was calm and peaceful, and SADC observers were granted access. 99% of the polling stations and their surroundings were free of campaign material or visible campaign activities. All polling stations visited were equally laid out 
with Vosta's role displayed. 98% of the poll extension observed opened on time, while all closed on time. There were posters educating voters on the voting procedures posted outside 85% of the polling stations observed. Party agents and observers were present before, at the opening, and at the opening in all the polling stations visited. Ballot boxes were locked and sealed adequately before voting started. Voter identification documentation was checked against the voters' roll. 99% of the police station observed were accessible to all voters, including people with disabilities, the elderly and pregnant women who were prioritized. At all the polling stations, voting proceeded without interruption. At 94% of the polling stations, all voters were allowed to vote, while at 6% of the polling station, some voters were not allowed to vote due to the following three reasons. Lack of appropriate national ID card, being at a wrong polling station, attempts to vote by proxy by Mauritians in the diaspora. No formal complaints were lodged in 96% of the polling stations visited. All polling stations that were visited had sufficient quantity of polling material and were free of irregularities. Party agents and candidates were allowed to follow closely procedures in all the polling stations observed, and reconciliation numbers were announced to all present in 79% of these polling stations. And finally, in all polling stations observed, the presiding officer reconciled the number of unused, used, and spoiled ballots at the end of the day, while the number of ballots received with the number of ballots received, while other sensitive material were packed, were packaged safely before handing it over to the returning officer. And finally, recommended, recommended improvement in the electoral process. At this juncture, allow me to recall that SIOM is, is continuing the process of electoral observation in the post-election phase. As such, the mission is not providing, will, will not provide comprehensive recommendation or qualification for the election at this juncture or at this stage. The mission presents the following recommendation for improvement by relevant authorities and stakeholders. The first two of which emanate from the 2019 report of SIOM uh, uh, to Mauritius. First is a concerted effort should be made to encourage women to stand as political candidates. Secondly, the counting of ballots at police station is in line with SADC principles and guidelines governing democratic elections. Those recommendations emanate, as I said, from the 2019 observation of the 2019 election in Mauritius. On the management of the election process, the Office of the Electoral Commissioner is urged to adopt information technology in the registration, capturing, management, and dissemination of electoral data and information to, to improve the efficiency of the electoral process. Technology can prove transparency of the election process and confidence in the management of the elections to enhance democracy in Mauritius. Frankly, the mission urges the government of Mauritius to consider or reconsider the possibility of amending the electoral laws to include the counting of votes and publication of provisional results at polling stations. And the mission recommends strengthening voter education in the country to ensure effective participation of the omission of Mauritian electorate in the electoral process. In conclusion, Siam observed that the pre-election and voting phases of the 2024 National Assembly elections were professionally organized and conducted orderly and peacefully, enabling voters to express their democratic will. 
the mission commands the people of Mauritius for political maturity, the spirit of tolerance and calmness they generally pervade during, during this election period. The mission appeals to all contestants to channel their concerns, if any, to establish legal procedures and processes in the event of any electoral dispute. Following the SADAC principle and guidelines governing democratic elections 2021, our final report will be issued within 30 days of this preliminary statement. The SIAC shall return to Mauritius at the appropriate time to undertake a post-election review, again in accordance with SADAC principles, to determine the extent to which the recommendations of SIOM have been implemented and the nature of support, if any, that the member, that, that a member state holding elections may require from SADAC region to implement those proposals. I want to thank you very much. Muito obrigado. Merci beaucoup. Asante Nisana.